Hello people, in this video we want to look at the differences between bacillary dysentery and amoebic dysentery. Yes, bacillary dysentery is caused by bacteria, amoebic dysentery is caused by entamoeba histolytica, that's a protozoan. Go back here, look at the table that we have created. Bacillary dysentery is caused by bacteria, example Shigella. And amoebic dysentery is caused by protozoa, example entamoeba histolytica. This much you have understood, right? Bacillary dysentery is because of bacteria. First of all, what is dysentery? Dysentery means blood in diarrhea. So diarrhea with some blood, that would be called as dysentery. What is diarrhea? Watery stools. If with watery stools, blood is there. If blood, blood should be there, then only it is called as dysentery. Okay, now let us look at the differences between bacillary dysentery and amoebic dysentery. Now, look at the uh, clinical features. This person will come with generalized abdominal pain. He will have fever. It will be, uh, bacillary dysentery will be, it will be having acute onset. Suddenly, full pain, abdomen, fever. Okay. Okay, so acute onset and this guy will have some toxicity also. Right, so this will be some clinical features of bacillary dysentery. Generalized pain in abdomen, fever, toxicity, suddenly all this came. This can be caused by bacteria, example Shigella. Tenesmus will be present. That means this guy always wants to pass through. That the urge will be there to always pass through. That is called as tenesmus. Tenesmus will be present. Okay. Now in amoebic dysentery, what happens? In amoebic dysentery, this is actually caused by a protozoan that is entamoeba. Histolytica, entamoeba histolytica will cause this. This is slow in onset. Suddenly he will not get slightly slow in onset. Fever is not there. So we didn't put thermometer here. The toxicity also is not there. Okay. This, uh, the, all this is there. Now, then moving on. Coming to the stools. Stools in bacillary dysentery. Look at this. There are, he, he is passing over 10 stools per day. So, lot of times the frequency is more in bacillary dysentery. And then the color is bright red. That is, it's like blood. Okay, blood and mucus is more. Feces is less. Okay. It kind of sticks to the container. So, we have drawn a container here. So, it kind of sticks to a container. Then, it has alkaline reaction. It is showing it is alkaline in nature. We have to add that here. Alkaline in nature. Now, when it comes to amoebic dysentery, the stool's frequency is just 6 to 8 per day. It has offensive foul odor. You see, we drew this uh, orange color going up. This is all foul odor. Here, the color is actually dark red. Actually, you can say brown. Because here, it is feces more mixed with little blood and mucus. Okay. It does not stick to the container. The reaction is actually acidic. Okay. All this you should know. So, these are the stool features. So, stool features, look at this. This is having acidic reaction. Okay. This is having acidic reaction. So, this is having acidic reaction. Okay. Then, so we are done with the clinical features. We are done with the stools. Now, let us go to the microscopy of, uh, microscopical differences between bacillary and amoebic dysentery. Pay attention here, guys. Now, we are moving on to the microscopic differences. Okay. So, in microscopy in bacillary dysentery, what will happen? You will see that there is cellular exudates. Cellular exudates will be present. Okay, here mostly you see feces is less than exudates. Blood mucus itself is more. Now RBCs can be discrete or in Rowlett's formation. They will be bright red. Okay, then there can be macrophages which have engulfed these RBCs. That's all. So you will see lot of exudate from these uh, cells. You will see RBCs which are bright red. They can be they can be either discrete or they they can be in uh, Rolex formation. There can be macrophages. Several macrophages actually will be there, and they'll be they will they would have ingested these RBCs. So again, the diagram has been updated. We have drawn many many macrophages here, and we have written here cellular exudates will be more in bacillary dysentery. Now let us move on to amoebic dysentery. The microscopic features. Now in amoebic dysentery, the RBCs are there, but the their color is brown and yellow. Okay yellowish brown, brownish yellow, whatever you can see. Macrophages are few in number. There can be eosinophils. These, this represents eosinophil and there will be charcot laden crystals. Okay. 
So guys, is this clear? In amoebic dysentery, you will see that the cellular exudates are less, the RBCs are clumped, they are yellowish brown, macrophages are few in number, eosinophils are present, charcot laden crystals are present, motile bacteria can be present, amoeba also motile trophozoites are present which have ingested RBCs. Okay. So this diagram is further updated. We have drawn this trophozoite. So motile trophozoites will be present and that too they would have ingested the RBC. Okay. So ingested RBC if you mark it is good. See met metoyl trophozoite with ingested RBC. Okay. So we are done with the differences between bacillary dysentery and amoebic dysentery. Now if you look at this diagram quickly you can tell. Bacillary dysentery. Take a break. Take a deep breath. Good. Now start. What are the differences between bacillary dysentery and amoebic dysentery? Bacillary dysentery is caused by bacteria like Shigella. It is acute in onset. It is talk, there is toxicity. Tenismus is there. There is fever. The person has generalized abdominal pain. The stools are passed greater than 10 times in frequency. The stools are mostly blood with mucus. Very little feces will be there. The stools will have, uh, they, uh, they will stick to the container. They will have alkaline reaction. In microscopy, if you observe the stools, there will be cellular exudates. RBCs will be bright red. There can be either discrete or they can be in Rolex formation. There will be a lot of macrophages which have ingested RBC. Now, moving on to amoebic dysentery. Amoebic dysentery. In amoebic dysentery, give me this color, okay. In amoebic dysentery, what will happen? In amoebic dysentery, amoebic dysentery is caused by protozoan like entamoeba histolytica. It is slow in onset. Then uh, the person will have uh, localized abdominal pain. There is no toxicity. There is no fever. There is no tenesmus. The stools are passed 6 to 8 times. There is foul smell from the stools. The stools will be mostly feces which have blood and mucus. The stools will not stick to the container. They will be acidic, having acidic reaction. When you examine the stools in the microscope, you will see that there are RBCs which are yellowish brown. Few macrophages are present, eosinophils are present, charcot laden crystals are present and the trophozoites which are motile which have engulfed RBCs can be seen. Here the trophozoites are eating the RBC. In bacteria, the macrophages are eating the RBC. That's all. That's all over. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Very good people, you listened to the whole video. Now you are clear with bacillary dysentery versus amoebic dysentery, the differences, right? Okay, we will meet in the next video. Actually, the same thing is there in tabular form. If you want, you can look at this also. You see. Bacillary dysentery caused by bacteria. It is acute in onset. Fever is there, toxicity is there, abdominal generalized ten tenderness. Tenismus is present, stools he is evacuating greater than 10 per, per, 10 per day. Stools color is bright red, it has uh, blood and mucus, less feces, it adherent to container, it's alkaline reaction, abundant cellular exud exudates are present, RBCs are discrete or low Rolex formation, macrophages are more. And there is one more point here that bacteria, motile bacteria are not present, interesting. Because Shigella is what? Shigella is actually non-motile. Okay, Shigella is non-motile. So you should not see motile bacteria. You should see only non-motile bacteria, I think. Okay. Then, coming to amoebic dysentery now. In amoebic dysentery, what and all we will just revise. It is caused by protozoa. Example, intermeva histolytica, onset is uh, slow in onset. Usually there is no fever, there is no toxicity. There is generalized, uh, sorry, localized tenderness in the abdomen. Tenderness is absent. Stool frequency is 6 to 8 per day. Odor, odor is foul smelling. Um, there will be uh, feces with blood streaked mucus. Stools are dark red in color. Nature is feces mixed with blood and mucus. Consistency does not stick to the container. This reaction is acidic. The cellular exudates are less than then 
RBCs are yellowish brown, macrophages are few, eosinophils are present, charcot, leaden crystals are present, then mot uh, motile trophozoites with ingested RBCs present. Okay. So that's all for now in this video. Hope you enjoyed and loved this video. Come back for the next video. Tata, bye bye.